All right, this is Tom. And this is Joe. And this is No Huntsville. Welcome to another episode. Very special episode today. We have some artists in, uh, an artist in here. We have Chandler Hayes, art contractor extraordinaire, uh, spray paint murals. You might know some of his work here in town, from the Lincoln Mill to Star Market, Probst Pharmacy, Disturbia, and some work over at Below the Radar. Chandler, thanks for coming in and talking to us today. Thanks for having me. All right, so I thought we'd dive right in because, again, most people probably would know you're here around town for some of the murals that you're doing. So my first question was, how did you get started in doing spray paint art, and uh, what, what are some of the reasons you like using that medium? Well, I've always been intrigued by street art because of the cultural pre-associations, but um, a few years ago I was asked to be the artist in residence at Lincoln Mills uh, over right. on Meridian and Oakwood. And that's just a big concrete building. Sure, yeah. And so uh, spray paint was a great solution because I was doing murals for the people who lived there and worked there. And so it was an opportunity. I worked with Wayne Cisco. He was the developer on that. That's project. right, yeah. Baller. <laughs> I take a bullet for that guy. Yeah, that's a good guy. For that guy. Real, guy. real good guy, though. I don't care what they say. <laughs> All right. But um, but anyway, it was my first opportunity to like get in bulk orders of spray paint, and I okay. was I was uh, getting paid hourly to do these murals. Was there. that one of your first large project that scale? Project yeah, like yeah, that? that was probably my first large scale project. Since then, I've done larger projects. But um, by the way, personally, I, I I saw that art. I worked in that building. I got to see it every morning, and I was really impressed with it. You know, when they, one of the things they did with the company when we moved over to Lincoln Mill, mm -hmm. we're, we're an engineering company, kind of stuffy, but they're like, oh, it's this cool new place, and <laughs> When you when I came up and you walk up to the building, that was one of the first things I've seen. It was this great fantasy sort of astronaut art, and I thought, well, all right, that's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. So we get to go by this again, a stuffy kind of company, but we got to work in this nice place, and I think your art kind of helped to that, which was great. I'm actually yeah. really glad to hear that because that was totally Wayne's idea. Uh -huh. You know, he had me doing all kinds of stuff around the mills, but when we did that, that was one of the like that stairwell had built been built in the '60s to accommodate NASA. And so he wanted to do a NASA stair, but he wanted it to be zany. So he had me bringing in uh, graffiti writers from Atlanta and Birmingham. And uh, each floor of the stairwell, I think it was three floors, right. um, was me and a different writer. Um, but, uh, but he wanted it to be zany. He wanted it to be crazy. And, and when I did it, uh, you guys hadn't moved in yet, ADS, right? right? You guys hadn't moved in yet. And so uh, there was a school there, and there were some other right. sort of stealth kind of companies there on the mm -hmm. thir first floor, and uh, everybody's like, oh, it's too crazy, it's too crazy. So I'm glad that it served the I think purpose. It, I think it did a, a really good job there. It so. was a fun project. Well, it looked like it. Yeah, sure. they, were, they were really beautiful. So oh, and that one, I caught, I caught a lot of recognition for that, and so did Lincoln Mills. Um, Iron Lack picked that up. That was my paint sponsor. And that's who you got. You were with a crew out in New Zealand, right? Yeah, that's yeah. The Iron Lack? Well, I think, I think in a... In an interview, I called it a crew one time, but that's like a specific term that, like, I'm not, I wasn't actually part of a crew, but there was right. sort of okay. a, you know, in New Zealand, uh, spray painters are like worship. They're like pro athletes. And, like, really? yeah, most of the best competitors, as far as spray painters, are from New Zealand. And uh, it's because of all the art that's in the culture. You know, they're all Modi down there. So, like, everybody's tattooed, everybody's sort of one with art. And, uh, you can see that in the Modi writers. Yeah. They have a real specific style, but they usually win the championships every year. Hmm. So, yeah, so I met up with those guys and I met up with Iron Lack because at that point, you know, like liking a brand of spray paint would have been like liking a brand of shoes or something like that. So there was a group, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Iron Lack was Australian. And the reason I liked Iron Lack so much is because um, spray paint for graffiti or art is called art paint. And uh, traditionally, that's really expensive because traditionally you don't buy the paint that you use to make graffiti with. So um, <laughs> most companies are actually owned by uh, auto paint companies, mm -hmm. but Iron Lax actually owned and operated by uh, ABT, which is an Australian spray paint brand. But they're great because since they're in Australia, they don't have to follow all the patent laws. So you can buy the really expensive kind of spray paint from yeah. them for cheap. Because they're really committed to making it, you know, accessible to all kinds of people. Oh, right. they, were, okay. they were my sponsor for years. They have nice. a, a wide array of colors too, because you would give me some of that iron mm -hmm. lag, and I was so excited when you give me some of those paints. Well, and because they, yeah. they're just awesome colors that you wouldn't really see in regular like cryon or something like that. Well, you know? and they're passionate about the paint. Like one of the things I really like is they've just come out with sugar paint, and so like when I start teaching workshops later this uh, summer, I'll be using sugar paint, which is by Iron Lack. But the reason I'll use it 
is because most paint is petroleum based, so that's what right. messes up all your respiratory stuff. Um, sugar paint's actually made out of sugar cane, so like kids could use it. It doesn't hurt your lungs and stuff. And you can eat it. Yeah, the iron. I don't even need it. I don't even need it. No more eating paint. No more. But. Uh, but yeah, they also have another brand that you can use inside, yeah. you know, that doesn't have as much of the gas in the mix. It's yeah. like it's like hairspray tech or something. Okay. But, but they're really trying to push it. I'd love to work with them again in the future and I still have a a good uh, I like to get, you know, rates from them and stuff like that. Oh, okay. But right yeah. now I'm shopping for a paint sponsor. Oh, well, there you go. There you so, go. everybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so tell me about, so we talked a little bit about Lincoln Mill and some of the other projects you're doing here in town. So, give me one of your projects that was really challenging that you got commissioned for mm. to put together. So, talk to me a little bit about some of those things. Well, um, it wasn't the hardest wall I ever did, but maybe the most challenging was, do you remember when all those uh, tornadoes came through and we, like, didn't have power for a week? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> that was supposed to be the week of Panoply, and so I had set up with Darden Heritage, the guy who owns Star Market. Right. Um, I had set up with him to paint the tropes wall uh, that week, and... I was like dropping off a buddy in Atlanta the day the tornadoes came and they were like chasing us all the way to Atlanta and I woke up the next morning and there was all of this awful stuff that had happened and I was out of town for it and uh, I was calling home and everybody here seemed okay, you know, and then people sounded like they may even get excited about not having power down to five points. <laughs> yeah. But I ended up painting it that week, and because Star Market was on generators, it became this pop-up street festival, and you know, nice. there were oh, all, all right. kinds of yeah. people there, and kids kind of asking me questions about what I was painting and how I did it. Nice. And it was the first time, I think, in Huntsville, for real, that I ever understood what kind of a positive influence I could have on my community. Because yeah, at that yeah. point, I wasn't really trying to let everybody know who I was. I wanted the walls, you know, but after that wall... I really wanted to find ways to be constructive in the community because I was obviously participating in it, whether I could relate to it or not. And I think yeah. that's, a, that's the difference about some of these murals that you're doing is that the exposure to them is huge, right? If you're painting a painting and you have it in a wall and, you know, mm -hmm. where you sell prints or whatever, you know, it's hard. You, you don't get as much exposure, but you have something on of a building that people pass by every day. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. You get, and a lot of your stuff are, is on main throwaways and stuff. Yeah. All the go, right, exactly. you know, yeah. just a lot of exposure and they're really colorful and just people see it's not just you tagging your name or something you yeah. know this is a, a really beautiful art form all right Chandler so um, tell everybody out there what current projects you're you're involved with and, and, and what you are doing right now well um, right now my studios indicator for the past year I've been the artist in residence at the JB Hearst machine works mm -hmm. and so I've been collaborating with Herb Underwood their indicator and um We've been developing sustainable economic models um, downtown for the efforts to become an art economy. Um, but that puts me in contact with a lot of people who use big surfaces and big resources. Like right. Trucks and trailers and, you know, walls and cranes and all that kind of stuff. But um, last spring, I did something for the Carnegie Indicator, and they hooked me up with uh, Neil Sellers at Decatur Container on the highway. And um, since then, uh, we've had a working relationship where he'll drop a shipping container at a big event, and I'll come out and do a demo where I'll install art straight onto the container. Um, and then he'll take it, and it goes back out on the highway so everybody on the highway can see it, and then eventually it goes back into circulation. So, like, I think there was a Walmart this summer that had one of my paintings out in front of it while it was being built, or a McDonald's or something. Okay. Um, I remember seeing that on, on 65. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On it. I was like... Yeah, yeah. Chandler's going old school, man. He's hopping fences and containers. And you told me that the hook that you got. That's, no, no, it's all that's legit. pretty cool, man. That's yeah, really neat. No, it's all legit. Um, but uh, but anyway, the point is, uh, I've got I've got a show coming up where I'll be doing that, where he'll drop a container, um, and I'll go out and paint. It'll be at the second annual Valley Fest. Uh, I did the last one, um, did a container and everything, and lots of people came out. Um, but and that's in Jones Valley. Oh yeah, right? that's right. It's in Jones Valley. And again, May tenth, right? May tenth. Okay. And um, I'll be uh, selling shirts there. I have my new uh, Year of the Box stuff that I'm going to be selling because, along with these um, shipping containers in Decatur, uh, I'm working in Chattanooga right now with nice. um, Hat Ponics. And Hat Ponics is this really cool uh, project um, that I hooked up with 
through collab in Chattanooga. But the point is, is that um, they build aquaponic farms in shipping containers. They have a big, wow. like a contract with the UN. <laughs> And so instead of sending like big bales of rice to Uganda, they send like a shipping container with everything you need to have a high yield aquaponics farm in it. How neat is that? So it just folds out and then, you know, all that kind of stuff. So this guy has like a shipping container office that everybody works out of. (laughs) You know, he's got a whole fleet of these boxes that he's going to send out. And um, when the UN reps come to Chattanooga to meet it, uh, we're going to do murals all over Chattanooga and stuff like that. And so I'm hoping there'll be some crossover. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> uh, but I'll be on shipping containers all year. And the big kickoff is May 10th at Valley Fest. And I'll be doing a container and I'll have my new line of shirts by a local, <laughs> local screen printer. <laughs> Maybe nice. we can bring some in beforehand, you know, and show oh, yeah, people cause shirts. And, yeah, because they'll be uh, rad. You know? Maybe if you go and see them, you know float you a shirt yeah. just I'll, one just one you have to know the secret <laughs> word or something we'll make it a contest ooh yeah, yeah. you know go see it. it it's neat because I went and saw you last year I delivered shirts to you when mm. you were spray painting oh yeah, yeah yeah and you could just you could watch him just from start to finish that's amazing and man. the container's just awesome when it's done I mean that's pretty cool Chandler, you know it's gonna be good <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, um, so I, that, that was kind of the, the last question I wanted to ask. I really appreciate you coming here. It's a Chandler Hayes art contractor. You can catch him on Facebook at forward slash Golden Genius Eagle. He's got a blog at paintedchandler.blogspot.com and a phone number 256-318-7488, but that's text only. Don't yes. be calling him in the middle of the night. <laughs> but he is taking on projects, so if you're looking to, to get some st- uh, work done, please contact him and I just wanted to uh, see if by wrapping up here is there anything you want to say to our listeners out there directly while you have the mic go ahead well there is one thing if he's listening interception our side's got the ball (laughs) (laughs) and we'd be remiss we would be remiss if we didn't say thank you for this he brought us in a great (laughs) guitar here and Hunt's Villains it just says yeah Hunt's Villain yeah it's one of those you gotta look at yeah, this is one of my weatherproofs uh, out in Decatur. Most of the materials I use are all uh, weatherproof. This is silk paper on an old window screen with. I was wondering what you use. That's really cool. Yeah, it all gets sealed by the spray paint. Yeah, so you can put it up at your lake house or out on your shed. Mm-hmm. You I've got so a you couple. You can submerge it. I've, I've already got pool. a couple. <laughs> <laughs> nice. My house is decked out in Chandler Hayes art. <laughs> I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, all over skateboards and everything. Chandler, thanks so much for coming in. Really appreciate it, and uh, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, guys.